And we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll now move on to roll call. Councilmember Hall? Here. Councilmember Mazzoni? Here. Councilmember Palfini? Here. Councilmember Tavalero? Here. Mayor Parham? Present. All right. You know, the acceptance of agenda and urgency items. We'll entertain a motion to accept uh, the agenda as it is. I'll move to accept the agenda as is. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Now we have a non agenda public comment. Do we have any uh, public comment for any items that are not on the agenda? Seeing as there is none, we will move on. Uh, council member announcements, meeting reports, and comments. And we'll start today with uh, Council Member Hall. I don't have much to report, Mr. Mayor. I've been spending a lot of plates. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Council Member Mazzoni. Um, I, I, I don't have much to say on this one, so. Okay. Not yet. Oh, the logo dinner. Council Member Tavalero. Um, yeah, I have a couple things. There we go. We had a. Um, LTC meeting, which is a local transportation commission meeting. Um, and clearly, as we can all see, anybody who's been on the freeway, construction season is here. There we have winter and construction season. Um, so it's going to be a mess and just leave on time. Then another good thing that's kind of happening is with the stage. We are in the process, this LTC group commission, which is three council members from the county, three city people and three um, county supervisors. We will be um, taking over this stage. There's still going to be the people that are running it. Um, and we are in the process of working on um, a new schedule. So we're hoping that we have within our community buses running so that people can get to maybe to school maybe to the food bank, maybe to the movies in Mount Shasta and back in a timely manner. Um, so that schedule is being worked on. And there's actually a, a young lady coming from UCLA who has her degree in transit, in transportation, and is coming to um, take a tour of the county. And that's in May. And I'll be driving her around our community. That's scary. Huh? So if there's any place that any of you think that the stage should be stopping the food bank, the schools, the college is obvious. Um, let me know so I can take her to those places and see if she can get those in our routes that we would like to have. Um, the other thing is I got this today and there's a this flyer is out there on the board. They're going to have this cemetery cleanup day uh, for Wynema and Lincoln Heights Cemetery on Saturday, May 18th. So that's a month away. We can all mark our calendars. Um, Nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, any help they will greatly appreciate. I think they usually like you to bring a rake or anything you have that can help. Sometimes a weed eater helps. Um, but that's May 18th at nine. And then this Saturday at 8.30, the Weed Rotary Club is meeting and we'll accept all help down uh, behind Taco Bell. Yes. Our same spot. Behind Taco Bell uh, in South Weed. Uh, and we will be doing the cleanup down there. And Solano's usually oh so kindly donates garbage bags for us. And I think the um, garbage company usually donates the garbage can dumpster for us to put it in. And, and so that's 8.30 this Saturday um, in South Wheaton. And I think that's all I have. 9 o'clock? 8.30, 8.30 for you. 9 o'clock for the other people. <laughs> all right, Councilmember Uh Not a lot to report on myself. 
everybody here went to Lola. I'll let you do the owner's honors on Lola, right, for, for last night. Um, I do have, as part of one of the groups I belong to is the resource centers, and we are having Kids Day on 420. Um, it's, it'll, it kind of runs, con not kind of, it does run concurrent with the spring day, although we will be looking for a crowd of probably five to uh, ten year olds on our, on our event. So I don't think we should have too much conflict, and we will send the parents down when they're done. <laughs> um, other than that, that's, oh, I want to thank the uh, Public Works. They did bring uh, water for us so I don't have to put my truck down to the springs. So thank you very much. And that's it. All right. Well, um, I'd like to thank uh, Mount Shasta for hosting the Lola dinner last night. I uh, also want to thank the entire council from the city of Weed for showing up. Uh, we are one of the few groups that generally brings most, if not our entire council, and several staff members to each of those meetings. So it's good to represent our community um, you know, strongly in those respects. A lot of interesting things going on in the county. Um, would like to definitely echo the cleanups for Southweed this weekend and for the cemeteries coming up in May. Um, having participated in some of those in the past, uh, it's really helpful when we have all hands on deck. And I know that not everybody can make it every year, um, but definitely appreciate it when people take pride in their community. Um, and that's, uh, that's it. That's all I've got for this month. So, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Regarding the Lola dinner last night, something, I, I don't know if this is time to talk about. We don't ever talk about the Lola much, but uh, I'm just thinking, you know, the, the reports that those different communities make. I mean, there's so much information that we hear. It'd be really nice to cons have that somewhat consolidated. Uh, uh, your your ringleader with the Lola, right? Sue? Sure. Could that be, you know what I mean, if, if everybody gave a copy of, of, of their report, we would take them back to, you know, myself, I belong to a couple of groups that'd be interested to have all that information in the oh. county. I mean, because that's, that's quite a bit of, we don't have a newspaper anymore. You know, that's... So I think a good opportunity for that would be as we look at developing the new website for the city, um, that we put that information out there if that project moves forward so that that can be included with all the other updates, you know, so that not just our folks here in, in our community, but people from the county could access that information through the City of Weed website. So I think that would be a good, uh, I think it's a very good idea there mm -hmm. um, to put to put on that, add that to it. Yeah, a lot of information. And ju because, just so people know that LOLA stands for League of Local Agencies, and it is four times a year, the city council members from each city, uh, which there's, nine of us, but McLeod and Lake Shastina districts were there last night, which was very nice. And we kind of talk, we usually have somebody speak, and then we talk about what's going on in our communities and what's happening, and then we all talk about infrastructure too, but we, you know, what's new coming in and that kind of thing. Can Julie, they explain all, everybody is there. Who all is at the Lola meeting? What, what communities are represented? Oh, Thule Lake Doris, Wairika, Weed, Fort Jones, Etna. Um, did I say Doris? Yes. Dunsmere. Um, Dunsmere, Mount Shasta, and Montague. Montague. Tule Lake. Tule Lake. That's and then McLeod Ma and Shastina. It's a lot of yeah. information. Well, Wherever, the, wherever it is held, that supervisor is invited. Um, and he did not, he was not there last night, but it's in three months, it's his same district. So he might be there in July. He was going someplace. I saw him on Tuesday. He was going someplace. Um, and, and it actually is elected officials. So we also invite the county clerk, the county district attorney. Um, it's, it's pretty much for elected officials. They usually don't come. But the cities are usually represented. It's very nice. You talking about Ed? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just go with All right. And our next time is the consent agenda. 
we have any discussion on that uh, outside of the work session? I'll motion to approve the consent agenda as written. I'll I will second it. Okay. All in favor? Cool. Oh, I'm sorry. Public comment. We did have public for for the agenda, so that was uh, that was nice. Very welcome. All right. Seeing as we have no public comment, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we have no items that were removed from consent, so now we move on to our public hearings. Uh, so tonight we have the uh, CDBG closeout and resolution acceptance, and we'll go ahead and um, open that hearing now. Give you guys these handouts? Sure. Okay, my name is Alicia and I'm here for, with Great Northern Services. I'm the project coordinator with Great Northern Services and um, I work with Brandy. Brandy was here last month um, discussing some of these grants that we're going to close out today. Um, the purpose of this uh, public hearing is so that the community has an, um, an opportunity to hear the activities that have been completed during the 2020 grant cycle under the State Community Development Block Grant, the CDBG program. Um, the first one is the uh, 21 CDBG PI 00004 AMR water meter project. Um, the public hearing will also be given the citizens an opportunity to accept the engineer plans and specifications for the environmental interview, the environmental review for the 2020 CDBG 12053 stormwater. St I can't even talk today. Stormwater NEPA and planning. The AMR water meter project, the budget for that project for the CDBG portion was $257,252. Non-CDBG budget was $25,000. Uh, the project summary was um, to purchase new automated meter readers and software for the water services in the city. The meters were to be installed by the city staff as time allowed. The meters and the software allowed reading while only by driving by um, and without physically assessing. The results to date, there was 1,815 meters that were purchased, enough for the entire city. 61 of those actually got damage in the Mills fire. 70% uh, were installed and they were installed by the city staff. Currently, um, it saves six days in staff time for the meter reading. This allows the meters to be read during in inclement weather and otherwise inaccessible uh, meters. So that's the closeout hearing for the water meter project. Any questions? No. Good. And good Chris, job to. Yeah. to Chris, yeah. Chris, or do you? Are they? We're done. They're all in. Not currently. Um, we are working on them as we get time. Okay, well, uh, we still do have up there by um, the college area to still do, and then the south end, and that's it. So like 50%, 75% are in? 70%. 70%. 70%. Okay, that's good. About 75% of them were installed. Um, the delay was because of everything else. There was a delay on making them, getting, them, yeah. getting the parts. Um, so there was a delay on that. Um, and there, there is about 70% that is, that is completed. But we physically have them. It's just a matter of who guys get them in. That's correct. Okay, cool. 
And the uh, second portion is the resolution um, for the stormwater planning grant. This budget was for 225,000 for CDBG portion and the non-CDBG portion is to be determined. This project um, was spoke about last month um, for the application that we're going to apply for. And this uh, is to develop the plans and specification for the stormwater management program to be addressed for the repeating flood program um, down on Main Street, um, Ripon area, Bulls area. Uh, the additional performance, the addition was uh, to perform a NEPA and a CEQIP environmental review for the pr pr proposed project that has been complete. Negotiation and obtaining the necessary easement and permits. Um, the results today, the plans are done. The project has been completed. The NEPA and CEQA have been completed. Additional phase two environmental review and identification is necessary and has begun. Most of the work required for obtaining the construction easement has been completed. Uh, the project, the permits for the project have already been obtained. The project will be ready to apply for construction funding later this year, which we've already, um, will be applying for that grant that Brandy spoke about last uh, month. And we're ready to get those funds. <laughs> It's, a, it's also a time for the community to um, make a comment about it and accept the project. We don't have anything from the community, so go ahead. So you would open the public at this point to allow for a public comment. All right. Well, the hearing is now open. Do we have any public comment on the matter? All right. Council members? I have self-explanatory. If I could, uh, so what we're, you're reporting right now. They'll get mad I didn't turn on my microphone. So what you're reporting now, right now is that Great Northern has completed their phase of getting the project completed. The only thing I've got, I'm seeing left open is us completing the project. The environmentals have been completed in so the engineering plans, correct? Okay. Yeah. So the okay. phase, phase two is still being done. So the easement <coughs> issues are still being handled. And um, permit, there's still a couple of permits that are outstanding. But all the permits that were necessary for the environmental assessment, those are completed. Those, so there's some okay. other permits, because since we're working in a water, an active water base. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Nice report. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Should, I should be able to tell the story now when somebody asks about it. Thank yeah. you. All right, so we'll now close the public hearing and um, consider a motion. I make a motion that uh, the, the council pass resolution number 16 2024 accepting the plans, specifications, and engineers' estimate and the environmental assessment funded by the Community Development Block Grant. 20 CDBG-12053, City of Weed, 2020 Storm Water Improvement Grant. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries by unanimous consent. Thank you very much. All right. Now we'll move on to cancel business. Our first topic is public safety uh, event encroachment permit by a motion to consider the approval of the encroachment permit for April 19th and April 20th, the closure of Main Street from 0900 to 2300 hours to a spring fling, including the waivers of We Municipal Code 9.16.010 and 9.16.030 for outside sale and consumption of alcohol within the event boundaries only. I think she wants to say something. <laughs> Well, I wasn't here. Well, I missed it last time because you moved it forward. So, and would um, you give us your name and address, please? Oh, I'm sorry, Elizabeth Tabor, 218 242 Main Street, 203 as well. Now, um, I don't know if I was just supposed to maybe talk to Justin as far as the um, when we did Steampunk, 
the year before, we did a two-day event. Um, Lonzo stayed downtown and kind of watched everything as, like, security for vendors and stuff that left their booths and everything up. And we can provide that this year. Um, okay, so the... <clears throat> As far as that goes, the closure, it's not a concern of uh, watching the items. That's fully upon the event organizers. Right. The closure is they've asked for a closure from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. each or overnight would open up. Uh, staff recommendation is that you not open the roadway and just make it a full 38-hour closure if council so chooses because of the safety issues of having, whether it be vending booths, food booths, tables and chairs sitting in the street with traffic going through. Uh, that, that's the recommendation. It's not an issue of, of overnight security. It's just if you want to have a, a closure for two days, at, at, you know, at council's decision to do so, but I would not recommend opening the street up if items are going to be left on the street just for uh, liability and hazard purposes. Right. So we do have the ability to have someone there to make sure there's no theft or anything like that, or option another option could be maybe move one side of the street to the other and put a couple barricades overnight so police and fire could go through main street and then put those booths and barricades back up the next morning so i've, I've reviewed just, the application pretty thoroughly um, one of the requirements is that we do maintain a fire lane uh throughout the entirety of the event for any event on main street um, so i'm in agreement with um Chief Mayberry on this, that we should consider a closure for the entirety of the festival just to mitigate any potential harm or hazards that could uh, arise from opening the street. I think that would allow, you know, um, the event to move forward smoothly um, for all the participating uh, artisans and, and musicians, as well as to make it safe for our citizens or visitors through our town um, to not have to worry about the hazard and just, well, you know, consider the closure. Okay. Um, but that's my singular opinion. Well, but we will have a right downtown. So your opinion matters on that. Right. So, well, but we will have so on-site security. Here. So that way, I mean, if worse comes I to worse, I do appreciate as an event organizer that you were looking to provide security. Um, our police department has done a fantastic job over the years doing security for many organizers' events. Um, but it's very much appreciated that you've taken that into consideration. Um, I don't think a, they have staffing for this, though. That's so. No, that's. Yeah. Uh, we encourage all of our different event organizers to provide security uh, when possible to not tax our, our city resources. Mr. Mayor, also, I think, you know, that the time we're talking from 11 o'clock to, to the next morning, I mean, there's not going to be that much traffic. It's not, no, it, it's, going to, it's yeah. already going to be closed. That, that would be my only question to, to the chief is, does that put an undue stress on traffic? Because we're limited, Grove Street is kind of tiny. All, all the streets are limited, but as Councilman Hall has stated, that's a, a low activity time of day. Um, okay. From 11 to, to 9, you couldn't, you know, couldn't ask for a better time if you're going to leave it closed to do that because okay. from 10 a.m. to to 10 p.m. is typically the high volume time. And so it'll be, it would be just the Friday night. Yeah. Everything's going to be gone by Saturday. And... Will the things be set up so that in the case that are, there is something, a barricade could be moved and the fire truck and the police car could go down the middle of Main Street, only one lane, or they could come back? Yeah, last year <laughs> after the event was over, <clears throat> because we put tents up and tables, we kind of took up the whole street. And so after talking with Steve and Tim, we kind of know now to kind of shift everything more to one side. So if something like that were to happen, they can... Get. Come up that far side <clears throat> and get through by just get. sliding two barricades over. Right. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. If you don't mind, if your business doesn't have people driving by at 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, <laughs> I, we're not open at 11 yeah, o'clock at night. Good. And um, I think it's for the betterment of the community that we have uh, the music and artisan fair than uh, my individual business. Well, and if I was setting up a booth that was going to be open Friday night and Saturday, I would not want to have to take the whole thing apart and then put it back together Saturday morning, which is what would have to happen if we don't say to leave it closed, mm -hmm. correct? They have to have to take everything off. Yes, that would be my recommendation because it's just, just the even if you say you left a table and chairs out there, the invitation to 
Joe Public walking by to sit on that table and chairs, and a car comes by, yeah. not realizing that traffic is flowing. It, it's just it's yeah. too confusing. Yeah. yeah. So do we need to change this? I think we should consider heavily amending this to include the full closure if we're going to consider it a motion here. I will make that motion that we close it from. Why don't we? Why don't we finish discussing all the items and then get some public input, and then we can come back and, and craft yeah. the motion. On just this one? On, yeah. Yeah. This and the alcohol, I think, is the other? Yes. Yeah, um, and so the other, the other consideration here is the waiver of the municipal code to allow oh. sales and consumption of alcohol within the event perimeters uh, during that time frame. Um, and do we have any public comment in regards to any of the above with the potential closure and the waiver of the uh, municipal code for the alcohol consumption and sale. What if, the question, what if they're drinking at 11 or is it still open consumption at that point or is? Well, if you're going to have a hard closure from for 38 hours, um, I would consider that still within the event boundaries. The event may not, may not be participating. Um, the only only concern would be either the store that has a liquor license, somebody consuming, which they wouldn't be allowed to do during the event hours. The store can't sell alcohol and have them go out and, and, and yeah, they can't do that. And neither can a bar. And the bar can't have okay. any at any time have anything come out of that business. There goes my solo cup worker. So, uh, <laughs> so it, it shouldn't be a, a problem okay. because they're not allowed to do that anyway. Yes. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm good. All right. Any other questions from the comments from the council or staff? It's finally a weekend. Nice. Yeah, finally, huh? Six yeah. years. This is six years, finally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so we'll amend it. We don't have to amend anything for the outside sale. Just amending for the time of the closure will be from, what time is that starting on Friday? Five is the closure? 9 a.m. Oh, 9 a.m. on Friday. Oh. You'll, well, notice, my... you'll notice in the packet that there's actually two event maps. That's because right. the Friday allows for the ingress and egress out of U.S. Bank. Okay. And then it will move all the way up to the division intersection on Saturday. Okay. If they, if they chose. Yeah. Okay. So my, my amendment is that they can keep it for the, how many hours? 38? 38. 38 hours closed in the designated spots that have been on the map. Is that enough, David? Yeah, do you also want to, do you want to include the, um, waiver. the waiver of the uh, alcohol consumption requirement? What's that going to change? Nothing. Well, you want to include that in your You're motion. You're including right? that in the motion. Oh, okay, yes. As a separate item. But it's not changing, right? Correct. No. Yeah, no, okay. Have to approve yes, it. all that, yes, that whole motion. Okay, so we have a motion for an amended uh, event encroachment permit closure for the entire 38 hours, including the waivers of the municipal code for sales and consumption of alcohol within the event boundaries. Do we have a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Hope everybody uh, enjoys the spring fling. It'll be nice to get out of the house and spend some time. In the spring. And hopefully the weather will cooperate. All right, our next item, uh, item B, administration by motion. Council will consider entering into contract for information technology management services with Network One. Yep, Mr. Mayor, uh, Council, uh, the city, as you know, uh, severed our contract with Garland back in the summer of last year. We hired Apex for our IT services on the temporary contract until we could fully uh, send out a request for proposals. Um, we had three proposals that were sent back to us. Staff sat down, reviewed the proposals, and after a lot of deliber deliberation, uh, selected uh, Network One as the new provider. Uh, so the improvement, the uh, recommendation from the, for the council is to approve the agreement for the IT management services with the City of Weed and Network One starting with the date of May 1st, 2024. I will tell you we have uh, Kale Weston with Network One here tonight, the president of Network One, if, if you have any questions for him. Council members? Cost. 
we don't have anything for cost on here. I agree with that. Do we have a? Yeah, it's in. <coughs> then I get it, in the it was in the packet. Was it? Okay. It was in there. What was the total? What was that cost? Oh, sorry. She said she emailed that to you guys. She read at the beginning. Today. The cost. Yes, yes, the one this morning. Yeah. I received it this morning. Okay. That's for the three-year cost. I didn't get the yeah. email today. The the, the <laughs> monthly cost on this is about sixty-three hundred, okay. and the overall contract value itself is what what we're worth, what we're supposed to put if it goes for the full three years, which we hope it does, right, Kale? Uh, is two hundred twenty-seven thousand one hundred sixty dollars a year. No, no, no. For three years. For, for, three for all three years. years. So yeah. $72,000 yeah. a year. Yeah, it's about 72 and some change each Just year. for my knowledge, what's the difference between Garland and this as far as um, money? Um, I'd have know to go offhand? Or, I mean, uh, yeah, Garland was pretty close to this. Okay. Their, their, their uh, submittal back last summer, I want to say was around six, somewhere around there. Okay. So they had gone up substantially. I just don't recall looking at yeah. Budget, exactly well, what it was. he uh, he phased out fairly early out of the budget of last summer. So, okay, thank you. Um, were your were your sorry were your three proposals close? Yeah, yeah. In cost, yeah, it, it, pretty close. I mean, there wasn't one that was two thousand dollars less than no, the other one. No, it, I, 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 as I stated before, the big deciding factor for us is the fact that yeah. we had four technicians that lived here in Siskiyou County that could be here um, quickly, and that's important to us. Yeah. Being in America, what's your name? Did, didn't uh, City Park have experience with, who was who this uh, Park and Rec? I believe you guys use Network One. Is the Parks yeah, and Rec? We, Parks and Rec? We yeah. Did for, yeah. Can you come to the Can you come on, sir? Yeah, so Network One uh, designed, installed, and owned most of the IT at the uh, community center right up until uh, the end of uh, December of this year. Oh! And I think they went directly with um, an ISP for the internet and then somebody local to do the Yeah, okay. Yeah. But yeah, we were there for about five years. Yeah. And we used to do the City of Weed a long time ago under the name um, Acme Computer. So we actually started in Mount okay, Shasta. Okay, so Acme... Acme was Computer Acme is Network One, yeah. Rec Center. Well, it was Network One. I think we changed I think we changed the name in 2017. Okay. So it was before we started at the Rec Center. But we started in Mount Shasta in 2004. We're based now in Wairika, but we're also um, all over the U.S. and Canada now as well. So it's a pretty decent-sized organization. Okay. And we're glad to have the opportunity to come back. So. So um, we have clauses. If we're not happy, where well, we can bail. It's a thirty-day yes. termination. Yeah, we have a thirty-day. We have a thirty-day termination. Okay. Um, we, we're starting to utilize um, the Colentuno firms, um, professional services agreement, so everything will be a little bit more uniformed, but that is in there, yeah, so if something like a situation we had with Garland happened, we can we can bail out a 30-day notice. Okay. We don't want that. Okay. Any other questions? I'll make a motion that we enter into the contract for IOE action. Yeah, do we have any public comments okay, thank you. on this item now? All right. Let's see I'll make a motion that we enter into consider we enter into a contract for information technology management services with Network One. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Now we on, move on to item C, fire department by motion. Council will consider authorizing the Weed Volunteer Fire Department to submit a grant application for the CAL FIRE Volunteer Fire Capacity Grant, which is a 50-50 match. Yep, this is a grant we apply for every year. Um, the max that you can get per entity is $20,000. We pay 10 for any kind of equipment that we may need, and we'll go for radios this year. So we're asking to... Permission to write that grant. 
Um, may I ask a question? Yeah, please. Is this a is this guy guaranteed you'll get it? No. No? No. And they they don't have to give us twenty thousand either. They could oh. reduce it. One year they did reduce it a little bit. It depends on how many people apply and how much they apply for. Oh. So that's the maximum? That's the max is twenty grand per entity. Yep. Go. Any other questions from council? Where, where are we proposing to get those funds from? I have, it's in my budget. 10, I put 10000 in the budget every year of our portion. Okay. And then the 10000 comes from Cal Fire. Okay. All right, thank you. Just huh? so the public knows that we're just not pulling it out of our ring there. Okay. Any public comment? All right. Seeing as there is none, I will. Well, we have public, so I, you know. Yeah. There, there could be a comment. All right. I will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, make a motion that we authorize the Weed Volunteer Fire Department to submit a grant application for the Cal Fire Volunteer Fire Capacity Grant 50-50 uh, match. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. All right, on item D, fire department by motion, council will consider the Weed Volunteer Fire Department's recommendation to release a request for proposals to build a Type 3 fire apparatus. Yeah, so that Type 3, we have the chassis, we bought the chassis, and if you look behind you, this is not the truck, the actual truck, this is a truck that um, it would end up looking like. We have a short video. They could have. Pretty sure it, it might. Fire, yeah. It might have been a stage fire. Yeah, probably a control. Nice burn. straight line. <laughs> but there's a. They have a. That's just one company that builds them. Um, you know, we're going. To, we just want. To <laughs> Better make it quick. You got five minutes until you hook up to a water tank. <laughs> it don't is it this is the one you bought a four door? It's a four door, yeah. Yeah, okay. This that's is just an thought. example. Yeah. Um, you know, so we'll show you what it looks like. I mean, the the terrain's gonna be a lot different there than it is here. Of course. And so will that be able to just put a fire out in a tree that's forty feet up? Yeah. Of course. We'll be able to respond that to anything, any kind of fire. Um, if the sleepers are there by themselves, without a driver, they can take that truck to a fire and start putting out a fire. House fire, car fire, wildland fire, anything. Instead so of waiting nice. for a driver to get to the station to take right. the truck. It'll be nice to be able to immediately dispatch somebody from the firehouse instead of waiting for an engineer to arrive. Correct. Is there going to be foam on it? Foam. Foam? Tw yeah, there's 25 gallons of foam. It's a type three requirement, so you have to have right. a GPM pumper that's five hundred. You have to have five hundred. You have so much water. I mean, so much hose. So it meets the standard of a type three. Now this is. However, a type three, like Cal Fire's type three, they're about five hundred thousand dollars to buy one of those. Right. This is not one we'll rent out, will we? We could. Yep. Oh. Well, I don't know. If Absolutely. Be. If I could, uh, I would offer one suggestion. We're sending this out for an RFP, and when we fund it, it would be nice to see on a spreadsheet where, where, where how we're paying for it. Yeah. I think that would go a long way with all the council members as far as seeing the source of the of the revenue. I have it right there. See, good man. I like you. Every ready. fire that we've made money on, I have it. Okay. And Thank you. Plus, remember, we sold engine 1212. 
for fifty thousand dollars, and that money is going towards that. Fifty thousand dollars of it, right there. Is is there anything down there right now that the students can drive? Ambulance. Oh yeah. They can bring an ambulance to your house for a fire. Okay. Or a pickup truck. Well, last time I had a fire, nobody came. Yeah. And after this is built and put into service, we would propose to sell the ambulance because you could probably get about fifty thousand dollars for it, maybe thirty. I also have, just so you know, for the pump and the tank, I have submitted a grant for that. So it would reduce the cost of the build by that, which is about sixty thousand dollars. I don't know if I'm going to get it, but I did apply for one. And our city qualifies for that grant. And there's no cost at all for it. Who did you go through for that grant? It's a uh, govs.com or something like that. Excellent. So there would be no use for the ambulance after we have this? Correct. We, I, yeah, we'd sell it. You wouldn't keep it for... There's no reason to keep it. No, no it's just maintenance, maintaining it. Uh, out of all the uh, pieces of equipment we've purchased in the fire department, uh, this one is probably the one that I, I like. Yeah, the most versatile, the one I like the f best because it can get a fire out quick. And around here with the winds, that's huge. So. Get some chrome tires on. <laughs> some can, we get, can we get a deer slayer on that? Um, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Let's just go one, one step at a time here. Yeah. So I think the largest improvement for this equipment for having a Type 3 is the fact that any sleeper can respond with an appropriate vehicle to a fire immediately, uh, right. which is the purpose of having the sleeper program so we don't have to wait for an engineer with a, a Class B yeah. to arrive to run the engine. So, um, And we did have one. We did. That's the 12, one. 12, 12, 12, right, that's what yeah. we had to get rid of. So, and but. actually, there's a company in Medford that builds these trucks. They're going to bring one here to the next council meeting so they can show you what it looks like in person. Can okay. we spray the water? Yeah, I'm sure. Drive down the road. We like it. <laughs> we <laughs> That will have to be separately agendized to yeah. water spraying. Water, water, spraying. <laughs> water spraying, yeah. We can't volunteer your car. I'll let you lead the charge. You can go with us. They won't have their journey. Oh, we'll have to bring turnouts for uh, council use. So, do we have any public comments on the request for RFP on Type 3? Oh, you ready? Well, seeing as we have no public comment, we are now ready to move forward. Um, I will make a motion to recommend to release a RFP to build a Type 3 fire apparatus for the Weed Volunteer Fire Department. I'll second. All in favor? I'll second. Okay. Yeah. Good. All, All right. in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We will now move on to staff reports, and uh, we'll start with Chief Duncan. May I interject one time, Mayor? Yeah. I want to thank the Weed Fire Department. It's going to be at Kids Day, and I wanted to go to the Police department, but your hands, I'm not sure if your hands are full or not, so. Not this time, but we're, we're planning on being there. We have actually, uh, okay. well, I'll address that when we get there. Okay, thanks. Go ahead. But thanks, yeah. Steve. Sure. Um, well, we have, uh, we're doing a lot of um, inspections on buildings. We have, we're starting on Main Street here, going down this side of Main Street. And then we'll go up the other side, and then we'll hit Southweed. Um, we have to inspect every building every year. Um, so our guys have been busy doing that, helping um, training. They're actually training right now. Um, I don't remember what they're training on, sorry. But Brian's got them out training, doing something. Um, every Thursday night we do training. We did lose two volunteers. They did resign. They were in the AMT class, and they didn't live here, so they weren't sleepers. Um, they actually lived at the college, so they moved back to where they came from. So, um, and we're just very busy. So, appreciate it. Are you looking to replace those two? Um, we're always looking okay. to replace them. Yeah, we have. 
basically right now 20 we had 23 volunteers now we have about 21 uh, most of them actually work for Cal Fire so that they live here and they're volunteers for us but they do help out a lot so well to take off my mayor's hat for a minute as a business owner I do want to thank you for the inspection um, it's always good to have an opportunity for improvement um, and I hope all the other businesses in town see it the same way and make the improvements that are necessary and just so everybody knows, we started actually with the fire department. We inspected that, and we had to make some corrections. <laughs> a couple holes in the walls that we had to fix. We did the city council chambers, and then Craig asked me if we could actually fix the mistakes, the corrections, because um, their staff is busy with grants and stuff, so our guys have been down here fixing the things. And we did the library as well, because it's owned by the city, so... He asked us to fix that as well, so our guys will be fixing that too. Okay. Excellent. All right. What, what did you fix? Uh, just like you know, emergency lights, exits, plug covers. It wasn't anything okay, major. Fixing the roof. No, that's yeah. just just life safety <laughs> stuff. Are you refilling, recharging the extinguishers, or do you do that? Yeah, we a company does it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In fact, they've been done here on oh, the maintenance yard. They should be done up there. Did they come up there already? Yeah. They should have come up there. We haven't inspected that building yet, but he did go do the extinguishers there. They did the extinguishers at the library. And uh, so, yeah. Good. Keeping them busy, good. for sure. That's a good thing. Do you take the students to do the inspections, or is it Usmaro and... We take um, Usmaro, either me, Brian, and myself, Usmaro, and who's ever else on duty. But, oh, right. Yeah. Oh, so we do take, we do take them. Good. I just assign a couple every day, if I can. It depends on our schedule, but we try to do two. On Tuesdays, we try to do at least two buildings because it takes a little while. We did. We've gotten the doctor's office, the the thing next door, the lab, and we're down to Mountain Market right now. We just inspected that one, so we're heading that way. We send the reports to Sandy. I haven't done them yet, but I'll get them to you. Because we put them in their files. So. Thank you for that. All right, we'll move on to our public works supervisor. So right now, Mike Peters is um, wrapping up that sewer line um, that went down White Avenue. That will uh, They're putting in the pipe either tonight or tomorrow night. They're waiting for after school hours to do that. Uh, Wakefield and Alameda got paved yesterday and the utilities are some of the utilities were raised up today as well with that and they'll be finished with that tomorrow as long as the weather holds out which that was the um, part of the water line project that went down Wakefield and Alameda thank you Okay. It looks good too, that, that the new road. I was surprised. You saw it? I didn't know it was here. Um, are you coming across the highway? Are they going to repave on? We are working on different types of fundings to be able to go ahead and get those roads paved as well. It's just this was just specifically um, the job that Sunrise did last um, summer. Well, no, I'm talking about the curbs and gutters for Wakefield. So the curbs and gutters. And paved. Were that's always a work in progress right now. Oh, I thought that's what you were doing. You told no. me it was done. No, that's the um, just the asphalting of those roads are completed. Okay, never mind. All right, it was on me. I was confused. All right, Chief Mayberry. Uh, so you may have noticed uh, when you sat down uh, the 2023. Police Department annual report was provided to you in a hard copy. Uh, feel free to uh, look at that, and if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. Uh, it's typically a, a more of a biannual because it's it's. I find it easier to compare two years. Uh, that way, you can look for anomalies and things like that. Um, as far as this year, with we're about one quarter in. Uh, to the to the uh, calendar year. Uh, we're about, we're sitting at around uh, 6,213 incidents. Um, more importantly, as far as 
public nuisances go, we're around, we're pushing 60 public nuisances uh, in various stages, either being closed or open. So we're getting a lot of uh, input from the community on that. Um, animal calls are still, continue to be uh, high. Uh, we're sitting at around 65 on those. Um, that's affecting us in our animal control. Uh, we had recently had a, a neighboring community that wanted us to take over animal control and just doesn't, I can't do it because we're sitting full most of the time out of the last uh, 365 days, CSOs are telling me we had animals at least one, but typically it's more than one sitting in the pound for 310 of those days. So um, co the collection of animals and the, the maintenance on them to find them somewhere to go is, is becoming more and more costly. Was that neighboring community going to help pay for some of that and maybe build a um, new kennel? Not in... Yeah. They, they had a very... Uh, Heavy no. They had a favorable deal with a uh, with a animal organization, and that animal organization figured out that they were probably losing money on that, I believe, and uh, so would we. very large increase in the contract for them. So they're looking at options, and they asked if we just don't have the capacity. It would it would take adding more uh, for us, more staff. So just so council and the community is aware. Um, the community service officers act as animal control. They act as code enforcement. That's, that's part of their job. Troop code enforcement falls under the building department. Um, they just take that upon themselves as well to help out, particularly with uh, incidents involving vehicles. Um, but we truly only have, when you, when you pencil it out, we truly only have one community service officer full time. We have one full time position that a lot of his time is taken up with evidence, which is um, a number one priority, especially when there's fresh evidence in there and he's working with the courts, he's got to focus on that. He can't be getting pulled away for animal calls or whatnot. And then our other full-time employee that does code enforcement, a community service officer, he's also a half-time dispatcher. So when you think about it, we only have one code enforcement person. With that many animals in the shelter for that amount of time, that's a lot of coming in on weekends um, to feed animals. The, the our Facilities not readily available for somebody from a police officer to go out there, especially if there's only one on, to be through two gates out in a remote area, and then we get a call for service. It's just not, not a good idea. So, um, and then stepping away from that, next week is National uh, Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, 14th through the 20th. I uh, just want to say if you have an opportunity, thank a dispatcher. Um, their job is vital to us. We could not function without them. Um, we have uh, staff now of two part-timers and four full-timers, and they do a very good job for the city of Weed. Community would not, cannot understand how different the service would be without them. So they're, they're very vital to, to the service we do provide. So you're full with dispatchers? No. At this time we are, yes. Cool. I have a question on the animal control chief. Are a lot of these animals being dumped off here, or are these being brought from, say, Shastine area into this area? Uh, well, it's hard to say. Well, you could say, yeah, because a lot of people tend to pick up dogs and bring them to us, yeah, even I from outside the that. city. Yeah. I've never seen a dog running down the road and thought I'll pick it up and take it to the police department. It's just not something that I have thought to do, but that happens quite often, and some of them do come from outside the city. We have at times had to turn animals away. Uh, just within the last month, I want to say last three weeks, we, we were at full capacity and somebody brought in a pregnant dog uh, picked up, up by the college and we were unable to take that dog. We had to refer them, you know, to either take it home to take care of it. We, we had nowhere to place that dog. So is the uh, Humane Society, are they just as full as, as you guys are? Hum Humane Society is just as full. Uh, I don't have their numbers, but I do know they are full. Uh, Rescue Ranch, I was told about a week ago that they had around 200 canines. Oh, man, oh, man. That's just horrible. And there is a cost. Uh, obviously, yeah, with everything I, else, cost of food, cost of maintenance, everything's gone up. And then one last thing, I, and, and you have the one full-time CSO then a part-time part dispatch. Yes. So is there anything in the budget for future that may be able to allow another CSO or... I know we had animal control 
before. But There's nothing that budgeted. So the, the city of Weed has used traditionally used its COPS allocation every year, which was back in the day would pay for two people. Uh, you know, times have changed, and that hundred thousand dollars doesn't pay for that f fully. Um, as well as we have a hard time filling those part-time dispatcher positions. Uh, so this was a way to have that part-time dispatcher available um, and also to have part-time CSO. So. That's too bad, but I, mean, I understand the times and how the cost of everything for each department is going up. Well, and, and we're unique in that we use it for community service. Um, right. Many agencies use it for, I've seen it purchased furniture or purchase, uh, you know, a vehicle or even salaries is not uncommon for officers just because, you know, it's just where your priorities are. Prior to me, Chief Nicholas had established it. It was for community service officer program, and I've tried to maintain that to the best I could moving forward because it is, it, it helps free up the officers for patrol so that the right. animals and public nuisances are handled by uh, the uh, Community service officers and the evidence keeps it allows me to separate that and not have a dispatcher do that. I have an evidence tech that does that who is also a CSO. Thank you. I would like to thank you, if I may. For if you're gonna if you're gonna show up at Kids Day, I do appreciate that. Um, the, I always like to have the kids introduced to law enforcement so that. Always a friend is a, is a good way to put it for me. Um, so thanks. So we are planning on being there. Um, if we're you hoping, can. <laughs> no, yeah, well, I mean, we are, besides that, on May 5th, there's law enforcement appreciation event up at Wairika campus, high school campus. Um, it's open to the community. We're planning on being there. We're hoping to have to, uh, we actually kind of stepped it up a little bit. We've got our own Weed PD tent that we're hoping to have available by the kids' day. Um, but yeah, we'll be there as we always are. Uh, Thank you. Can I say one, one, yeah, well, one, one last thing. I'd like to actually thank all of the city and the council as well, because, uh, TOT does get contributed to the kids day thing. So thank you. I just like to say, I appreciate you this every year that started back with chief Nicholas was in here, you know, and I'd like to see other departments have something pretty similar to this. And you know, because it's knowledgeable, it's it's facts that you have in here, and it's a lot, it's a lot easier reading than just throwing me a piece of paper. And so I just think it's something that just take in consideration that staff can do this. Each department, public works, fire department, staff. So, but anyway, I, and I appreciate that, and thank you. Um, I'm saying that just so you know, we do ours at the end of the year. Yeah, that's fine. Whenever and we do it in conjunction with the, with the fire warden, so they ask us to do it at the end of the year. So that, that's fine. It would yeah. be something. You know, it doesn't have to be a stick, but just something. No, is it end of the fiscal year or end of December? In June. Oh, in December. Um, and back to Kids Day. And if anybody here or has in this room has never been there, go to Kids Day sometime it's amazing and as the public may know it's it's free so you can't actually pay for anything which is kind of remarkable and the road weed rotary club will have free hot dogs oh yeah we got yeah. the rotary okay. slap me <laughs> all right we'll move on to the city clerk's report no report all right and city attorney Sure, I have just a couple things. Um, as the city manager mentioned, we have prepared a new suite of professional service agreements for the city uh, based on the model that we use for all of our general counsel clients. So keep them regularly updated, and it, it hopefully it will be a good resource for staff when entering into contracts, um, including for design professionals and for maintenance. Um, we've also got some direction on a number of municipal code updates uh, that we're going to be working on in the city attorney's office. So you can expect in the next few months to start seeing some um, proposals to amend our municipal code. Um, also, I did attend a legal advocacy committee meeting, executive committee of the legal advocacy committee for the League of California Cities last month. 
Um, that's where we work on the re request for amicus support for different uh, local governments throughout the state. Um, and we are, there is planned the spring city attorney's conference, which happens to fall on the next council meeting date. So depending upon what's on the next council meeting, once we see the agenda, if it's a light agenda, um, I may request to, to call in by Zoom so that I can attend the city attorney's conference. If, however, it's a heavy meeting, um, I'm happy to uh, be here in person, as I always am. So Could we join you? <laughs> Wait a minute, where is it? <laughs> Rancho Mirage. No Near idea, Palm but Springs. we'll find it. It must be a good place. Somewhere warm. <laughs> Gotta be warm. Dry. <laughs> All right. well, thank you very much. And on to the city manager's report. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, I just have one thing. Um, our librarians wanted to, for me to remind everybody that on April the 17th at 11 a.m., they're going to be holding a, um, a basically as part of the library LTC grant to improve the $20,000 that we got to improve the ADA access, they have to have a public input meeting. So if people want to stop by and put their input on ADA access for the library, they're welcome to do that. So on the 17th, on the 17th at 11 a.m. Just just for, you know, for our building over there. So that's part of the grant requirements. That's it. Oh, I have a question, Tim. Mm -hmm. um, LT, no. There's a walk audit. Oh, yeah. On the 24th. Yeah. But that's by. Is that is that part of the Caltrans? Or in the LTC? No, it's part of Melissa Cummins with the uh, yes. county. And yeah. the road. Is it the one we did a couple like the one we did a couple years ago? No, not with the Caltrans project. No, but this is with the uh, um, the, the county, the, Melissa Cummins. Yes, but it's LTC. also with a company out of Portland that is doing bike lanes and that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So it is here, and they're they're wanting our thoughts on um, routes to the schools, where kids walk, where people would bike. And it's here at City Hall on the 24th at 9 a.m.? April 24th? April 24th. Okay. Did you, did you know about it? Yes. Yeah. I'm still mildly confused as to exactly what it is, but I'm hoping that when I show up, I'll completely understand it. But it doesn't have anything to do with construction that's happening in two or three years is it planning another one of those yeah yeah i love yes. planning uh <laughs> there's also i was looking at our emails there was a re only because i've never been to a meeting and i've been on the committee for uh, god knows how long of <laughs> recycles and i think it has to do with uh waste did you see that on there from S siskiyou County gov dot something. Yeah, I, I think it's. I, I think I've seen the email, but I I couldn't tell you the yeah. exact date. They emailed it to me. I'm going. Oh my God, they're having a meeting. <laughs> anyway, all right, I'll, I'll research it. All right. Well, I've concluded staff reports. We're now going to adjourn to closed session. So we also do need to provide the opportunity to provide comment, public comment on the closed session items, which uh, are yes. property negotiation. Um, our public that is now leaving, do you have any comment on our closed session items? <laughs> Thank you, ladies. <laughs> As we have no comment, we will now adjourn to closed session. We are. Did we vote on it? I'm just kidding. We we'll vote on who brought their homework with them. <laughs> homework? I've got, I've, got, I've got mine and Sue's so far. Oh, I'm supposed to give it to you? You used to ever give them to you. <laughs> I, I never thought about it. <laughs>